Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. How's my audio? Is the microphone at a good level? Can you hear me talking okay? I see it's going up to like 18, 18, negative 18 to negative 12 decibels or so. I think that's sort of the window that I've wanted to, um, to stay in. This is my second live stream ever, so <laughs> I'm just uh, just trying to make sure that my audio levels are are good. <laughs> All right. Um, especially with the music in the background, because I just want to make sure that the music isn't entirely drowning out my voice. Um, one moment. Just moving some stuff around to my, okay. Um, okay, I think I have everything sorted out where I need it to be. I'm just waiting for confirmation that my microphone levels are good before I keep going. <laughs> Hello? Hello, microphone levels? Por favor. I'm not getting a confirmation. I'm scared to start. Music could go down a bit. Okay, thank you. Um, is that too much? I'm trying to adjust it this time in OBS directly rather than on my own stream, like on my own screen. Um, how's this? Is this a little bit better? Um, testing, one, two, testing, audio, output. I'll turn the music down on, uh, on Spotify even if it's a little bit too, a little bit too high there. It's fine now? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, hello. I'm excited to be back live for my second stream ever. Um, my name is Angora Built and I'm an architectural technologist based out of Western Canada. I model buildings in 3D for a living. Um, over the last, I guess, three weeks or so, I've been kind of pumping out content uh, related to our camper van build. Um, over the last couple of videos on my channel, if you go back, you can see we've been talking a lot more about like the, uh, the as-built phase. Um, just talking about the van, talking about like where we got it, why we picked the model that we had and stuff. And um, I did 3D model uh, the existing van as well. Um, so that's all ready to go and we're ready to actually get more into the design side of things. Um, so I guess just a review on what I've been doing with this series so far and what I'm intending to do. Uh, I'm a professional architectural technologist. I work very closely with designers and, um, and architects on uh, commercial projects mostly, commercial architecture, commercial interiors, and uh, 
I don't I don't get to do a lot of design in my own in my own role with my work. So I thought it would be really fun to take up streaming and actually do some uh, fun live design with all of you guys. And I'm doing it in the same way that I would do it in my office or like in my line of work, following the traditional like design phases uh, from pre-design into schematic design, design development, and into like construction documentation than the construction phase. Uh, I do have videos on my channel highlighting the previous streams that I've done where I get into all of that and kind of get a little bit more granular in what that process actually is. Um, so today on the stream, we're kicking off the schematic design phase. And so this is, this follows, I guess, the pre-design where pre-design where we focused on like the context of the existing space that we were working in, i.e. the existing van. Um, schematic gets more into um, the actual like programming, figuring out what you want to put in the van. And then you take those elements that you want to put into the van and configure it in such a way that you end up with a floor plan or a layout. Um, so how we'll work through that today. We'll start out more with, as I mentioned, um, the programming and confirming what we want in the build. And I have like kind of a workflow for how we can kind of distill it down. Cause I, I think it's a little bit overwhelming at first too. If you're kind of just like, I don't know, I want a camper van. I want to go sleep in the woods off grid and not have to worry about my creature comforts or and the like. <laughs> um, but I think we can get a little bit more granular in breaking down how to determine what your values are in your builds um, on that level. And in the same way that I am doing this with our camper van, uh, this can also be emulated on any other project that you'd be doing, whether you're doing like a renovation or uh, like building a house, a tiny house or whatever. Um, or if you're just curious, uh, it can be emulated across the board. Um, my goal here is to hopefully simplify it and help convey the logic that I use when we're making design choices around things, um, which I'm hoping is helpful for other people that are doing their own design projects or designing their own things for fun. Um, so today I'll start off, we'll do the programming and stuff first. When we have the list of like our values and what our priorities are with the build, that's when we can kind of get into the listing of what like actual elements will align with those values that you've identified. So like that's when we'll get into, okay, bed, uh, kitchen, uh, do I need a fixed bathroom? Um, oh, I'm a climber, I need storage for my climbing gear, those kinds of things. Um, so we'll get into kind of listing all of that and we'll do it uh, in, in, in level of priority for yourself, I guess. Um, once we have those elements, it gets a little bit fun. We, we can do a little bit of inspo research, traverse the internet, watch some tours, do uh, kind of like a Pinterest kind of uh, deep dive and get into uh, that kind of workflow and like what's worth pinning and all of the like um, and how to organize that. Uh, once we compile that all together, we can get into the actual sketching. And so I'll do some hand sketching on my iPad, um, just some like rough schematic floor plan ideas. And then maybe when we get like, I don't know, like a few, maybe like two nailed down that like we feel really good about, um, we'll take it into the 3D model and actually see when you're using realistic dimensions, how everything will actually fit together. Um, cause sometimes in plan view and sketch view, it looks like it, uh, it looks like it would work. <laughs> and then you get into, especially because it's such a small space and every inch matters. Um, you'll realize that, uh, it, it's, it's not realistic, for example, to have like an 18 inch deep, like kitchen counter that might be kind of uncomfortable. So I'm hoping to break down some of those practical things. Um, oh, actually a good example of that too is like our our bed in our van that I have had to design is not a conventional um, queen or double mattress bed size. And then that's kind of created some, um, some fun other challenges that we've had to work around. Um, but we'll get into it. I'm excited. I haven't, uh, again, second line stream ever. It's, uh, 
it's not any less nerve-wracking the second time. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get my iPad cast. I also got a new, um, I did some overlay edits or whatever. Um, okay, I want to change how this looks. This one's a little bit nicer. <clears throat> Is this, I think this is big enough. Cool. <laughs> and yeah, the schematic design phase is, is essentially exactly as it sounds. Um, schematic sort of being like big picture thinking, kind of looking at the whole, like taking a step back and looking at the holistic um, interwovenness of the design so we're trying to stay away I guess from any specifics if you have like I'm trying to think of a specific example if you have a really deep desire to have brass hardware pulls or um, matte black fixtures in your van and stuff like that we aren't we're gonna push that we're gonna push that to the back burner. We're gonna save that for the design development phase. We're just gonna focus more on the actual planning aspect, uh, big picture planning <laughs> of this. So I have kind of already started setting this up. And again, this can be emulated on any project. I advise you do this on any project so that you actually understand why you're doing your project before you get there. But we're gonna, essentially follow the whole the rule of who what when where why <laughs> and I've already filled out some items and I'll work through each one individually I don't know if it's worth sharing and posting this later um, and we'll add to this a little bit as we need to <clears throat> but as I mentioned in previous episodes my partner and I bought our 1975 Chevy G20 camper van back in 2018. We bought it back then with the intention of doing a six month road trip, full time, taking time off work, uh, touring around North America specifically, and with the intention of figuring out where we wanted to end up in life because we don't want to stay in the place that we were born. We'd like to move somewhere a little bit closer to nature, a little bit less prairies, I guess. <laughs> and so with that in mind, we'll start off with who was using the space. At the time when we bought our van in 2018, it was just myself and my partner, Krish. I'm giving him that name. <clears throat> and initially it was just us two. That same fall, I believe it was, we got our dog, Odin, and he is 70 pounds. He's a burner, Bernie's mountain dog crossed with a golden retriever. So he's 70 pounds. Uh, bit of size consideration there. <clears throat> and so with that in mind, that's, I guess, three bodies that we knew were going to dwell within the van full time. <clears throat> and I have a cat, <laughs> but he's, he's older, he's 10. And so initially when we bought the van back in 2018, I was like, oh, maybe we could train him to be an adventure cat. We could get him on a leash and learn how to enjoy being in the outdoors. I have it as a question mark because it's still, I still, I still might try. <laughs> but as it stands, I think in the time that I've known him, he doesn't he's not he's a little bit more change adverse I think so I don't I don't necessarily know if we can count on our cat being in the van full time if we knew or had made the decision in advance that we did want our van in the cat full our cat in the van full time we would have approached the van purchase differently and probably have gotten a different model of van 
something probably just a little bit bigger so that there was a little bit more roaming space, a little bit more, just a little bit more enrichment, I guess, uh, for enrichment options. Uh, because between me and my partner and our dog, that's already three bodies that pretty much takes up the whole bed. And then with the cat included, that's another, another, another consideration for say the litter box, more food storage, the water needs and stuff. So that does, that does size up what we had initially purchased. So we're just going to focus, I guess, on the needs of myself and my partner and accommodating our dog. <clears throat> and accommodating our dog was very important to us. So you'll see as I go through design decisions that I've made in terms of our layout and stuff like that, I've very much taken him into consideration. And I've also taken into consideration potential future medical issues he may have if he has issues jumping up in the bed down the line. Those kinds of things have been taken into consideration. <clears throat> I'll also note too with um, myself and my partner, we are very fortunate in that we're not impacted by any form of mobility issues or disabilities that we had to account for. And so our van design is very uh, inconvenient, I guess, <laughs> for someone that may have those issues. There's a little bit uh, tighter spaces. Some things are not quite conventional sizing. As I've mentioned, our bed, for example, is not the conventional queen mattress or double mattress size. We've compromised on that in favor of some other issues or some other elements that we felt we valued a bit more or a bit higher. <clears throat> So we have us three and moving over, I did kind of cover this, <clears throat> but really digging into why you're using the space, what do you want it for? Because the amount that you're using the space and the frequency that you're using a van really, I think, impacts some of the choices that you'll make in the design. For example, we really valued full-time exploring. And I think recognizing that when you are in a space 24 seven and you're actually trying, like you're intending to live in it, um, that, that introduces a whole onset of things that you might not have accounted for, such as if, like if we go into the bush for a week and we wanna be off grid, disconnected from nature and not have to come into town, but when we do go into town, we're still full time in this vehicle and not going back to a house or a hotel where we have access to laundry and stuff like that. Um, thinking about what, like what living things, casual living things might come up if you're dealing with it full time. Whereas if you had a weekend warrior, there's some compromises you might be able to make like for us, full-time exploring, that means I really prioritized, or I do prioritize having some place for our dirty laundry so that it is completely out of sight, out of mind, because I, I recognize that when you are living in a small space, the amount of clutter that builds up will drive you bananas. I think it'll make you go bonkers. <clears throat> Um, access to our summer hobbies. So for us, this would be more uh, backcountry or I guess forest servicery road camping, like uh, doing it like a little bit of off off road excursioning to the best that we can in our van. Um, accessing like hiking and climbing and the like. So for us, for example, then this means like we don't have any interest in camping at established campgrounds. We want to go off grid. We want to go in the bush. We want to go places where there are generally less people, less amenities available. <clears throat> but 
In addition to this, we also wanted access to our winter hobbies. So a big, a big reason why we got the van is to go on ski trips and be able to park at the ski hill on a Friday night and stay there the whole weekend and ski till Sunday and then come back home. Or when we go on a longer road trip where we're living in the van full time, we want the ability to bring our snow gear with us so that we can hit up ski hills and stuff in different states that we might not have traveled to to go skiing being from Canada, uh, like Colorado, for example. <clears throat> and so this access to our winter hobbies creates a need for winter hobby storage. <laughs> I have two sets of skis, uh, and one of those is being powder skis that are 73 centimeters long, five foot seven, the height of me. My partner has two snowboards <laughs> and all of the snow gear that comes along with it, snow pants, jackets, helmets, and the like. So those, those are items that take up a lot of space. But for us, this is something that we value really highly. So I'm going to recognize when we get into the listing of amenities or elements within the space, this is of high priority. And 73 centimeter long skis take up a, quite a bit of space, and especially when there's two of them. So we'll get into that a little bit and the logic there, but the final why we're using the space, this is also a big one. I actually, I starred both of these because these are two important values to us. Um, music festivals, uh, specifically camping music festivals. We go to a ton of them. On the bucket list actually is Burning Man eventually. And so with that in mind, there's a few things that like have, have changed how we'd want to use the space, I guess, like being able to utilize our van to create shade structures for music festivals or dumb things like integrated RGB strip lighting <laughs> so that we can put it into party mode, dumb things like that. But it, it just changes how, um, how we are going to use the space and what we need. One moment, this song's really quiet. I'm going to skip. <clears throat> so this is kind of getting into our why. Oh, I want to drag this on screen and I have to use my hand <laughs> over here. <clears throat> when is the space being used? We are from Canada. It is winter here for nine months of the year. One moment. I don't know why my music isn't going. Do my speakers? One moment. What happened? It's playing and I don't hear it at all. There we go. Okay. I think we're good. <clears throat> so in Canada, it's winter for eight or nine months of the year. I'd say eight months of the year. We wanted the ability to be able to camp all year round for that reason. Again, the winter sports being a high value of ours, for us, we will be winterizing our camper van. Again, wanting to live in it full time for six months, but then once we're done our full time trip though, we still wanna um, keep it as a weekend warrior. I think the intention for our build at this point for us is to do the six month full time road trip, but keep the van as a heirloom, like a weekend warrior that we hold on to. But I, I do foresee us upgrading to an RV that has a little bit more space just to be able to bring the cat along, account for the dog. We might start a family one day. So I do. 
I do foresee us leveling up. I recognize that the van that we have, I don't think would be comfortable or practical for us to live in full time for longer than six months to a year. Like I know there's people that will live in their vehicles for like two to five years even and longer. And I'd love to have the ability to just fuck off any time for however long and know that I would be comfortable within like a undetermined window. It's just I can foresee this vehicle that we have is not the vehicle for that. I will say that in a way is kind of a lessons learned because the intention when we initially bought it was for it to be comfortable for us full time, I think. And then just through building and um, even staying in the space, like we can camp in it now. It's got, it does have a bed, we have that much. So some real life experience, I think for me has proven that full time indefinitely is not in the cards. Full time for right now, for the life stage that we're at and what we're hoping to do with it makes a lot of sense. And the wear. Obviously, we talked about the skiing and the winter aspect of things. But I also think, too, on the other hand, like we want to we wanna eventually take it to Burning Man. So what do we have to keep in mind for desert camping, on the other hand? The nice thing, I guess, though, is when you winterize a vehicle and like you really up the insulation and uh, all of that stuff, it, I think it, it does the opposite as well in the heat and will keep a lot of the heat out. So I think that a lot of the decisions that we're making for winterizing the vehicle will translate to be beneficial for very hot levels. But recognizing that we have some limitations <laughs> with the weather that we'll be able to endure in a metal vehicle that can only be insulated so much. This for us mostly I'd say has has changed our planned road trip route. Less of a design, less of a design impact, but still worth considering because we are intending on bringing our dog with us. We will have to avoid any extreme temperature fluctuations with him in the vehicle because we do not have the space or the capacity to have air conditioning. We don't have the height, I guess, to go into like a parking garage or something with him in the vehicle to help keep temperatures cooler, like an underground parkade. We won't be able to do that. The top is too high. So for us, I guess this more, this is more or less just a, uh, an impactful question to be conscious of. I don't necessarily think there's anything that we can do from a design perspective with how the vehicle is. This would have had to be something if we recognized that we wanted to go to extreme weather, weather locations with our dog. And I will also state again that we did not have him when we made the initial van purchase. We got him after. So again, that's changed some things. But if we would have known that we were gonna have him and wanted to have the capacity to install air conditioning and to, or to park underground or whatever, it again might have changed our approach to what van we actually purchased for this project and what we decided to move forward with. So the final thing I wanted to talk about again is what are your values and your priorities with the build and really get in i mean maybe you just want to camp and that's very simple <clears throat> but these things for us these three winter sports festivals and off-grid 
impact impact the design especially off-grid because well now we're now we're accounting for a solar setup or and the off-grid options for our plumbing system and the like it changes there's a lot of considerations with this but we value very highly the ability to go off grid it's not a compromise that we're willing to make so it's going to be designed around same thing with our winter sports and same thing with our festivals and I'm trying to think of if there's anything else we could add to the list here for ourselves, but I think that's probably it. I think that's probably it. <clears throat> and so for ourselves, this is our who, what, when, where, why. We'll be jumping back and forth, I think, a bit here. As we get to the next step, I'm actually gonna move my keyboard back because I think I'm gonna have to do a bit of a bit of uh, handwriting. <clears throat> but just to just to lay out the greater context of where my partner and at and what we value, so that it makes sense as we move into the actual elements that we want to incorporate in our build. So let us move into that. <clears throat> And I didn't do any of this preemptively. I'm gonna do this live with all of you because I think, I think I wanna talk about what I'm adding as I'm adding it. <clears throat> so I would say for us, some of the big ones, the obvious ones, um, would be to have a bed. But I want to add on to this. <clears throat> Through my traversing on the interwebs, down the rabbit hole of research and inspiration, there was a lot of comments from van design regret videos and threads and the like about a fixed bed versus a conversion bed. So conversion being a bed that can turn into a table and or like a banquette or a sofa setup or something. So I think fixed or conversion. I'm gonna leave this um, I'm going to leave this this way for this exercise for now. We'll get into it further. <clears throat> Recognizing that we wanted to dwell in the van full time. We wanted the ability to go off grid, but we also wanted to winterize it. An important mandatory element for us was an indoor kitchen specifically indoor and again that's more for the winterization aspect of it but i didn't want to be standing outside in minus 25 and it's a whiteout and I have to go to the back of my van and pull out the mobile kitchen. I think those are great in hot weather. They're really cool. Great innovation of space to bring indoors to the outdoors. But we're Canadian <laughs> and we like skiing. So I want an indoor, wanted an indoor kitchen. Um, to elaborate on that further, specifically, It was a toss up between, do we want a integrative, integrated stove? Or did we want to just do what a lot of other builds do where they have the stove, like a camping stove that they just pull out or slide out from a, from a drawer and then you have to screw in the propane and you can just set it all up. But it's, it's, not, it's not permanent, it can be swapped out for something else. It's 
a lot more cost effective. Um, but I'm gonna write permanent or integrated. And we'll go back through these after. I wanna just list everything out first. So we'll get through that. So we have our sleeping needs, sleeping needs covered, our food needs covered. The other one I would say is sanitation needs. So our bathroom and shower considerations. I see a lot of comments again on design regret <laughs> threads or videos that talk about how standalone bathrooms tend to just go unused or tend to not be utilized as often as the original that as the builder may have hoped for. But because we wanted to winterize, I wanted some integration in some capacity. So I do, for us, I do want an integrated or like indoor toilet in some capacity, whether that is functional casually or under emergency circumstances. I just wanted the ability. This is also something I wanted for even just safety. If you're camping in a Walmart, Walmart parking lot, for example, and it's two in the morning and you really need to use the washroom, I didn't want to have to leave the van by myself to go do that, especially in an unfamiliar place when you don't know anybody. Maybe you're not in the best area. Maybe you are. I don't know. I didn't really want to have to ever worry about it or risk it. <clears throat> but this will take us to my first point under our hobbies, I guess, tier two. An integrated or an indoor shower. And so the reason why this is in tier two, going back to winterizing, <laughs> there's a ton of van builds that will have showers out of out the back outdoor showers again love that great idea i still think i'd like to incorporate it in some capacity in our build it's just when you've been skiing for two days three days in a row you've been sweating but you're staying in the parking lot and you're camping I really wanted to try and incorporate an indoor shower so that we don't have to go to bed gross. <clears throat> but it's not mandatory. <laughs> if we can't fit a shower in, I'd rather prioritize tier one. You can survive a week off grid without an indoor shower. And this is where it gets back to, um, I'm gonna put an outdoor shower. I'm gonna put an outdoor shower here too. Again, tier two though. You can still utilize gyms, you can still utilize public parks, recreation centers and the like public pools, things like that. There, there are ways to access showers. So, tier two. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some other elements that might relate to hygiene or um, I guess more of the plumbing related elements. I think that's probably it. <clears throat> I will also say too, I'm gonna just go off of this as well. For our indoor kitchen, actually. Okay, so we knew we wanted a permanent or an integrated stove. 
but this also entails a refrigerator i can't spell refrigerator i'm just gonna put fridge <laughs> that also entails a sink And those, I would say, are our three big items. We'll also, obviously, slink in storage. For food. Food storage. Okay. So those items to keep in mind for that. <clears throat> carrying through into our miscellaneous I guess day-to-day -day stuff we touched on food storage but there are needs for other kinds of storage <clears throat> and so Let's get into what we might need to consider as mandatory for that. And the first one immediately comes to mind is clothes. We got our food storage, we got our clothing storage. Oh, also with the kitchen, we need like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Utensils. <laughs> Utensils and cooking paraphernalia. <laughs> Pots and pans. Um, I'm just going to say cooking accessories. <clears throat> and because there's only two of us using the space, we only need to account for what would, what would be enough storage for two people to use these items. But because we want to dwell in the vehicle full time or for longer, I still think it would be nice to at least maybe have like four of everything so that if you got a little lazy and decided you didn't want to do the dishes right away, um, cooking accessories, dishes, there's something to keep in mind. It's more in the back here. Dishes, pots, pans. <laughs> <clears throat> and this stuff, getting more into the specifics of, like, what we fit in for storage, I would say, for all of these items, I would say in the design development phase after this is where we get a little bit more granular into, okay, like, how many pots and pans do we have? How many utensils do we have? How many spices do we want to come with us? So we're just going to keep it as, like, a big a big block item for now but the block item the tetris piece will need to just have, be large enough to account for stove fridge sink storage right <clears throat> going back to other storage obviously we have our clothes uh toiletries i guess Camping accessories, like chairs. I'm gonna say linens, because we don't want to be sleeping on the same dirty sheets the whole time. Or towels, like, in the like. Especially if you're doing outdoor, like, water activities, swimming and stuff. Linens slash towels. Another helpful idea, actually, to help with this stage further, is actually doing some research on... on elements to put in your van, right? 
I actually haven't looked up one of these lists in a long time. What to include in your van build? <clears throat> and this is more systems. Gadgets, kitchen essentials, valuable must have, useful storage systems. See, this isn't necessarily just a list of what to. Ooh, that's not spelled right. What to include in your band build? Let's check Reddit. Sometimes I feel like. Sometimes I feel like Reddit gets a little bit more directly um van build is another way what to include in mm -hmm. get inspired so this, this is how to design. <laughs> this is where we're at. <laughs> Must-haves and nice-to-haves. I want uh, I want to see if somebody's compiled a list of obvious elements so that I can link it in the comments or something at some point. Hmm. Practical must-haves. Induction stove, memory foam bed, solar panel kit, child locks. <laughs> I don't... I don't find this helpful. Not the most helpful. <laughs> I'll do what we can. <clears throat> okay, we have sleep needs, food needs, sanitary needs, getting into storage needs. And I would say this is the last and probably most important mandatory item I can think of. Because tier one is like, from my perspective, ensuring that your basic needs are met so that you can actually survive when you are out in nature. Okay. So the, the clothes, toiletries, the camping accessories, I'm going to say is mandatory. I mean, you could live without chairs, but I, I, for me, that's a mandatory. I don't, I don't want to. Um, another a note on the camping accessories too, given that we go to music festivals as frequently as we do, we are often bringing along camping equipment for the festival camp, such as tables and the like, shade structures and stuff. So for us having extra storage for camping accessories, even though it maybe wasn't necessarily a priority for like our van our van trip for six months we could probably get away with not having as much of that stuff incorporated but music festivals are important to us they're of high value so i'm keeping this in the mandatory list linens and towels is also incredibly mandatory but then we're gonna get more into i guess storage for like the hobby stuff <clears throat> Oh, the other mandatory, obviously, is our snow gear. This was big mandatory. I designed the whole bed layout around being able to fit my skis underneath. Big mandatory. <clears throat> but lesser mandatory uh, for storage, I guess. We toyed around, like, my partner likes to longboard 
having eye rollerblade, having space maybe for some of those recreational items, if, if we can make it work. But again, this is a tier two, because it'd be nice to be able to longboard in a new place and see a lot of the area very quickly. I think trying to fit bikes is a little unrealistic given the size of the vehicle that we had. That's not to say though, we could put a mount on the back, but then I would be slightly concerned about theft. I'm gonna stick with the with the blades. <laughs> Boards and blades. Boards and blades. Um initially the other item with storage that we have since had to compromise on is we have a 16 foot diameter steel dome for music festivals that weighs 400 pounds and is probably the box for it disassembled is probably uh, two and a half feet by four feet in size initially when designing I really wanted to make it work. We actually like did have space for it under our bed in the back. And then we put it in the van for a music festival last year. And the <laughs> the whole, the dome was so heavy. It, it sunk the back to tie, like the back of the van so far back that whenever we would like go over a curb, our van almost bottomed out at the back and we drove for <laughs> literally one block to get to the gas station and I was like no we're not we can't we can't fit this <laughs> but that was an item an element that derived from our hobbies that has since not been able to work <laughs> um just some just some Shits and gigs, too. I think I've always thought a nice to have would be a projector for when it rains or when it's snowing too much to go outside and hang outdoors. It would be nice to be able to watch something on a screen larger than a laptop screen. Um, so I'm going to do projector with screen. And again, this is more of a nice to have because I don't know if it would be within our budget. There are good little standalone projectors now though, but this is something that was not super important because we'll have laptops and stuff with us. That being said, we're going to segue back to storage here for a moment. Especially living in the vehicle full time and going around the states and doing a lot of stuff. Integrated secure storage. That might be mandatory. Like, being able to put your passports or other travel documentation or even uh, cameras, laptops, in a secure, either maybe a safe or something welded to the bottom of the vehicle, or I've even seen really clever hidden storage, like false bottoms on, on uh, cabinets and stuff, so that if somebody broke into your vehicle and was rummaging around, they would never know to look there, potentially. So I think uh, secure storage for for IDs and stuff, I think would be, IDs slash docs would be, would be mandatory. I'm honestly gonna say secure storage for electronics too. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> yeah, I think for electronics as well. This is something I've been very aware of given how our van looks because it's a retro it's a retro vehicle. Did I lose my music again? I did one moment. back please oh there we go okay <laughs> I think that might be okay I think that's okay. One sec. Alright, we'll leave it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, secure storage for uh, IDs, docs, electronics, and stuff like that. Some things, especially with your passports and the like, I would n never want to risk losing. I think that would just create so much inconvenience some things i know you can get insured when you get your vehicle insured to be recompensated for if you lost it but i personally given the nature of what we're hoping to do with the van and doing content creation and the like losing a laptop or an external hard drive or our cameras would be detrimental <laughs> and where was I going with this? Oh yes, uh, because our vehicle is a restored vintage vehicle, I believe it stands out a little bit. And we, we are trying our best, I guess, not to draw too much attention to our van beyond what it'll already get. So that's why I have hesitancies towards my, uh, mounting any, any equipment like bikes or even our snow gear like our snow sport equipment on the outside of the van we could put something on the roof rack probably to do that but i don't want to <laughs> i'd rather it just have everything inside where we can lock it and not have to worry about anybody just unbolting it and dipping with it so <clears throat> I'd say secure storage is huge. It's a big one. Very important. Oh, that's not. Very important. Very, very important. <clears throat> um I'm getting a I'm gonna get a little bit dummy with some of the ideas too. Just because it's like, we'll get it all down so that we can account for, for, uh, for it. But I know again, RGB, RGB lighting for festivals. <laughs> uh, and the light strips and stuff is so stupid. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what else because we have I would say majority of our storage needs covered indoor shower or outdoor shower Here's another one. Festival attire. <laughs> There's festival attire that we will not need to have in the van full time. 
but it would be nice to be able to fit it so that it's there. <laughs> I'll add that to my important list as well. And just reflecting on this first page again, I'm just kind of going through and seeing if there's anything from my lists that is triggering some more ideas. I did note off-grid because off-grid is a mandatory item for us. That means that we need to design for a solar setup. I'm running out of space. Because we are designing to be off-grid and because we're intending to be winterized, we need some way to avoid freezing water. Therefore, we cannot have any undermounted water tanks, whether that is fresh water or gray water. Gray water, maybe, if you use a tank heater. You can get these tank heaters that like stick to the underside or like stick to the outside of a like fresh or gray or black water tank and it just it it, it attaches into your electrical system to provide just a little bit of heat so that the water or like the liquid doesn't freeze i'm gonna say indoor water tanks I did not leave enough space for any of this. One sec. Can we just like it? It. Oh. Okay. I think I have a lot of it. Oh, actually, I have another one. And this is going to be in mandatory as well. Oh, hold on. It. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back to the start here for a sec. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, would this be a why or a how? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna add what my values are and priorities are here in this, in this, um, in this column. <clears throat> this actually impacts a lot. Intending to use the space to facilitate content creation. Because when you are using your van for socials or media filmmaking and the like, As I, as I got into about, about secure storage, well, that's an that's a element. But also, how the heck are you going to work comfortably in a small space on your laptop for hours at a time if you are trying to be off-grid and not go into urban areas like coffee shops? I'm going to add this. So that means that we have to talk about uh, comfortable seating, comfortable work seating. I also think that would... I'm going to put in tier two.
probably requires Starlink, I would say, hey? Depending on, I guess, the nature of the content creation and what you're hoping to do with it, I think... I think I've reached a point where I'm leaning more towards live streaming on the road. I'm gonna say Starlink. Now, I don't know what that entails in terms of... hardware? Design? Like, do you... Hold on. <laughs> do you need... What do you need for Starlink? What is the setup? Okay, you have the dish. Portable use. What do you get, though? Download. Check coverage. Is it just the dish and then you just treat it? Is it like Wi-Fi and you just... It won't work out well. Okay, so I'm just trying to- I'm just trying to figure out for incorporating Starlink what, like, physical items we'd have to account for taking care of and storing. If it's just the dish, it looks like it might just be the dish. Unboxing Starlink, maybe? Unboxing- Unboxing Starlink. Okay. One sec. I'm gonna pause the, I'm gonna turn the music down. But I'm gonna, A third or less the size? What's mind-boggling to me about this design that all these engineers come up with is you now have a box about yay big that can- I'm just gonna skip through this. <laughs> okay, so they get the dish. It's not very big. I mean, it's kind of big. What's in the box, please? Your power strip, that's it. That's it. That, you got everything. So this goes up top. It'll position itself. Got some uh, regulatory structure. notices. You are now the proud owner of a custom Starlink package. How thick this wire is. Okay, like half, probably half the surface area. This cable's gray. Mine is black. I wonder if this is more durable. Is it thicker than yours? I think it's about the same. It looks about the same thickness. Oh, interesting. It's got two plug in. Whoa! Whoa! Dang it, it's micro USB. Well, it's gonna plug in once and that'll be it. And then you can power. Oh, it's got a whole suction yeah. thing to it. It's pretty standard. So that goes in the bottom and it's gonna stand on its own. Huh. It's a router, but. This is the orbit between the sun. This is a trajectory. Trajectory. So if you were to go to Mars, this is the orbit trajectory that you would take. The complete version of it. So where that's Mars. This is Earth, yeah. and that's the sun. Coincidentally, this would also be a path backward if you were coming back. Oh. But the planets would not be in those locations at the really? time. Awesome. Mars would be over here, I believe. Nice so of them to include the instructions on it. A single power cable, we got a signal. Dishy came to life, and we quick where the satellites were overhead. Mike noticed better uptime, even with obstructions, not really. Okay, so it looks like you plug the dish into... Something. But I assume when you use Starlink every time, every time you use it, it, 
every time you use it, you have to take it out, right? And put it outside and do the whole setup and stuff. Right? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's put Starling here. Dish plus, would it be called the modem? Is that? <laughs> the, oh. Okay. So, comfortable work seating for two. <laughs> for minimum two. Something I'm gonna put under our nice to have, but it can be sacrificed. When you are at camping festivals, people often come to hang out with you, with whatever you're doing. Um, I don't know, say you need to run back to camp to put on some more layers because it got cold at night and you have an entourage of like six people. <clears throat> Something sick or like nice to have would be, I guess, just like enough seating or like ways to kind of fit people in the vehicle <laughs> to all hang out comfortably for a while. I guess they could all just do that on the bed. It'd be cool if the seats on the van could swivel. See, that was one of the most heartbreaking realizations with our van in our build that we've done so far due to the size and proximity of the seats to the walls of the van they can't swivel and it would have opened up a world of opportunities i think the dream would have been to have the banquet like comfortable work seating between the front passenger and driver's seat, have them swivel so they could face inward, and then have some kind of pop-up table. Because those seats would be, like, they're so comfy to sit in for hours. Now we have to figure out something else. And our van doesn't swivel, so I'm really sad about that. But in addition to, okay, in addition to seats, actually this is probably important. I'm gonna put this in five. Okay, so, well, okay. <laughs> We have our chill space, chill space for friends, chill space for friends. <laughs> In addition to our chill space for friends, something that is actually important is to have ways to drive the vehicle legally, I guess, with more than just two people in it. We give rides to our friends to music festivals all the time. So if we give them a ride, what can we do? How can we how can we ensure that they're comfortable, right? Legal back passenger seating. But I'm going to put this under tier 2 because it really can be compromised. We can survive saying no to friends that want rides. It's it's not super high on the prio list, I guess. Leave legal back passenger seating. I'm also gonna, I'm gonna put a question mark on if we need seatbelts. 
because I don't know necessarily at what point, like where the line is between when you do need seatbelts versus when you don't. Because if you think of the large RVs, like the class A's or whatever the big ones are called, you don't, they don't have seatbelts, right? I've never seen one with seatbelts. It's the front two passenger and driver seat will always have seatbelts, but then the other ones don't. And you can kind of just walk around all willy nilly and it's a little bit, it's a little bit treacherous. <clears throat> but this might, this might, this is gonna require some research. So we have our indoor solar setup, indoor water tank plumbing, um, comfortable work seating for two people minimum. Under tier two, under six. And this is more of a values thing. Content creation. My partner and I love to cook. <laughs> so, cooking together. It would be kind of nice, but we could. No, it would be kind of nice and I'm gonna put it in tier two if we could both be cooking in the kitchen at the same time in some way, whatever that looks like. Um, two in kitchen. Oh, actually, and let's circle back to some other values I mentioned we had. Again, this is tier two, but integrated laundry storage. I also think it's worth considering garbage or waste storage. Because <laughs> if you're going off grid, you're going to have to carry that back with you, right? <clears throat> I'd say my partner and I on our own, we've gotten really good at not using a lot of waste. When we lived on our own, we live in a house with five people now. When we lived on our own, we only took the garbage out every like like once a week <clears throat> no this is a this is hold on this is not no <laughs> this is a higher priority than tier two i would say actually who wants to Oh look, this is the right number already. I don't think anybody actually wants to just like throw their garbage in a in the front seat or anything, which is actually what we do right now in a garbage bag. It's pretty gross. <clears throat> um. Okay. This is coming up so late, only because it felt so obvious to me. But I realized I should write this down for everybody else. Safety things. Safety things. Fire alarm. CO2 detector. Fire extinguisher. Safety things. Incorporate that. Please. And these things are usually quite small and they can just kind of get tucked away, like all the detectors and stuff like that. This is probably more of a design development, like a next step integration, <clears throat> especially because these are mandatory. <laughs> they need to go. They need to go in. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I'm listing it for the sake of emphasizing it <laughs> further. <laughs> please remember this, please. <clears throat> mm 
But at this point, I think I'm just kind of grasping at straws here. You got a lot of the big, the big items. But I think, I think we'll move along. If this list, this list is not fixed. This list changes as our needs are always changing. So I don't want, I don't want to view this step as like, okay, we did it. Now we're moving on to the next thing. This is going to always be referenced. We're going to reference this for the rest of this stream series. It will be, it, it's an important, important document. <clears throat> um, so these are our Tetris pieces. These are what we have for our Tetris pieces for now. <clears throat> and again, in order of importance, everything at the top here, absolutely 100%. It's going in the build no matter what. Absolutely fitting it. Has to. <clears throat> These ones, we'll have a little bit of discussion further. This is where you can get a little bit more, I'd say, creative in your design solutions, though, too. Um, using the shower example as like a spoiler alert, we actually do have a, a shower, an indoor shower in our van, but it's hidden in the floor <laughs> because it's not a requirement to be utilized full time. It's, it's, it's one of those things that will only need it in, in special circumstances. And those circumstances I'm hoping will be very prevalent in the use of our van, but not all of the use of our van. So we did opt for a hidden shower that's tucked away. Because for the other half of our van usage, in the summer where the weather's nice, I'm hoping we can integrate an outdoor shower. And yeah, spoiler alert, we have an integrated indoor shower in the floor. It's already built. Well, it's halfway built. <laughs> we have not done anything for an outdoor shower. We have not even touched the plumbing system yet. So we don't even have a water tank purchased or anything. <clears throat> I just thought of another thing though. That being said, getting into the showers though, especially with indoor outdoor because of the winterizing aspect of things um I want a water heater we can do everything in our power to insulate this vehicle as great as best as we can but if it is not it, it will never be perfect we have too many windows. It is not. It is not the perfect van for winter camping by any means. So, it's going to get cold. Even if we have an indoor water tank, if we're skiing all day, it's gonna get cold. Another item that we actually have, too. I forgot about this as well because it's so small and tucked away and hardly of any importance, but we do have a heater. It's a ventilated heater that ventilates through the floor. It, um, it's gas-based. It ties into our gas tank. The cool thing about it too is like it, it just, it dips down into your gas tank, but only about three quarters of the way down. So you will never run out of gas. By the time your gas is less than a quarter of a tank, you won't be able to use the heater though. And the gas heater, we do have it. It's already purchased, it's ready to install. We just, we already have the line put in the tank. We got a mechanic to put the line in the tank for us because we didn't feel comfortable doing that part ourselves, <clears throat> but we have it. The cool thing about our gas heater too is that it ties in with Bluetooth on your phone. And so we'll be able to check on our phone what temperature the vehicle's at. And so when we go skiing, for example, if Odin is in the van hanging behind taking his daytime nap, we'll be able to see on the van 
um, or on the Bluetooth, through Bluetooth, or is it Bluetooth? It might be an app. It might be, it might be data-based then, because I know that you can test, it, it must be data-based, because you can test the, or you can check the heating levels of your vehicle when you're not in it, and you can adjust it on your phone, so that if it gets a little bit too cold for him, we can just like bloop bloop up the heat. And it's ventilated through the floor, but we're also gonna tie in our CO2 alarm to our phones as well. Cause I would like to have those alerts if he is ever left behind in the vehicle so we can get back as quick as possible. So some things to consider. We have our Tetris pieces. I'm trying to think of if there's any other major electrical plumbing, solar, heating. I think I have all of it now. I think I have all of it now. <clears throat> cool. Okay. So with this list, we can move on to sketching. But before we get into that, what I really wanted to do today <clears throat> is actually do some inspiration searching and some research before we get into actually sketching because we have this list of items here. We have our wants, needs, mandatory needs, wants, and wishes integrated. <clears throat> now we can go around on Sleuth on the internet and look for van builds or, well, I guess van builds that have the elements that are on our list incorporated in their builds. <clears throat> and before we get into this, the one thing I want to state, <laughs> especially coming from a design background or like a, a design industry, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So there's nothing wrong with finding a layout in your research and copying it exactly i think i think especially in the van build space where everybody's doing it from scratch they are gutting the whole thing and building it from the ground up i think there's a, ro a romanticization around creating something brand new and super innovative i guess maybe from a socials perspective too that could score you like youtube points if you're doing tours and it's a little bit unique and nobody's seen it before but I want to stress <laughs> that your comfort in this space takes precedence over any visual or aesthetic goals that you have for it. And if you see an example of a, of a build in your research and the person that is giving the tour has lived in the vehicle for two, three years without any concerns or issues and they're happy with it, like absolutely just take it <laughs> our van our van the van design that i settled on is actually very very close to the traditional westphalia van design because there's a reason it worked for them so well it's it's i would say it's one of the best one of the best designed interiors for a small camper van space. I'm gonna even just pull this up one sec. Um, <clears throat> if you look at these tiers, so when I'm talking about like the traditional Westphalia in uh, interior, and you'll see this in all of them, can I make this bigger? Typically it has the, the kitchen when you first walk in and then an integrated bed right to the left with a full height cabinet system at the back. You can kind of see it better in this photo. And this is like the vast majority, That's this is like all of the Westphalia interiors that I've seen. They are so, I would say they're so practical and convenient for what they are given how small the vehicles are. <clears throat> Even this full height cabinet at the back, like I'm gonna 
be honest and say state that my final design ended up largely ripped from this one <laughs> from this style and anything that deviates from it typically from what i've seen is because somebody has redone the interior and intentionally deviated from it <clears throat> But see, they're all the same. See here, in this one. Oh, can't really, I guess, see it that well. In this one, they're all they're all so similar. So with the swivel seats and stuff too, it's sick. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is the moral of that story. <laughs> um, I'm gonna run to the washroom. And I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do some sleuthing around for some inspiration tours and Pinterest and the like. So, see you in a moment.
Okay. Um, how is my... How is my music doing? I just want to make sure when I switch to YouTube, um, I'd like to be able to, I guess I can stop my music, huh? Maybe I'll just stop it. I'd like to make sure that I have audio from my headphones and not my speakers then. I'm gonna just like test test something. Um, I don't know. Oh. All the interwebs to find uh, a couch. How is that? Good, but picture quality is not good for me right now. Um, can you hear the video and me talking over the video space, okay? Not stick out too far. Um, yeah, it was a little wild. So I have help. We found one. <laughs> uh, the couch that was here. I have help. It was. We're good now. Uh, like okay. On the floor, and it was cool, and it kind of folded out so you could sleep here. All right. uh, but what I found was like if you kept a couch like that, then then when you had people stay over, so people just like walk research on top is my of favorite part. I love I love sleuthing around for tours and stuff. I watch tours. I watch tours constantly. I uh, I've actually been refraining from watching tours pretty regularly. <laughs> Just because I want to start doing it live on stream, I think it's really fun, and I have a lot of opinions <laughs> about design choices and stuff. <clears throat> okay. YouTube is my favorite go-to. I think it's just so much easier when somebody walks you through a tour and you can see... You can just get a, f a better feel for it than photos, I find. So we'll start here. We'll do some of that. I'm actually gonna... Let's get Pinterest going on the side, though. Um, cause we'll jump into that after I haven't searched anything up or queued anything up because <laughs> I felt like it might be value to valuable to sleuth around live and share the, even just like how I deduce what's worth watching and keeping in mind that we are in the schematic design phase right now. So we're looking at the big picture. We're looking at all of the elements. We're not looking at any granular details like, oh, do they have a spice rack? integrated in their casework we're looking more at like oh bed placement sink placement um kitchen location shower or bathroom integration looking at more of that stuff anything that kind of aligns with our our initial list that we just made i really want to keep it open but i'm worried if i do i'm worried if i do it's gonna kill kill the quality of my stream but I kind of want to just like keep it in the corner here I kind of just want to keep it here to reference especially for these big mandatory items because this is kind of what we're on the watch on the watch for mostly and specifically lower YouTube volume okay Thank you. <laughs> All right. Because I have a Chevy G20, I'm going to start by looking for tours of the make of our vehicle just to see what other people have done. That's a good starting point. But I think we can also look at other 
other kinds of vans, other sizes of vans, other styles and stuff. <clears throat> and initially when I come to this landing page, my first reaction is that all of these G20 vans don't have high tops. I'm going to be blunt and I'm going to say I'm ex naying any tours that don't have high tops because I think that it, it all like everything is already everything that is integrated is already below height of the van. We have upper height that we can utilize in ours. Everything is also or should be designed in mind with being on your knees or being kind of crouching because we don't have that issue i don't think it's worth it i'm not going to watch it okay here's the first video i found that has a chevy g20 high top camper you can see I've actually already, I must have watched this a long time ago. I don't remember what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> but he's got a high top. It's got 17,000 views. It was posted two years ago. I don't know if this person is still in the van, but I think we'll just send it. I don't know how good this video will be. Let's, let's find out. <laughs> so I've been working pretty hard getting the van a little bit more comfortable for the winter time. And I thought I'd give you guys a little tour and show you the progress that I've made since I bought it. And I, I really want to know where the road goes. So we'll go ahead and start here in the front. Not a whole lot of modification has happened up here, um, with the exception of the seats that I'm sitting in. I replaced the old blue bucket seats because they were pretty worn out and tired. And I found these seats here out of a Mazda 5 minivan in the junkyard. Got them for 80 bucks, about $37 a piece or something. I will never change the seats of our van. <laughs> I never will. I know, I know that this is probably better for safety to have new seats. It's probably a lot more practical if we got new seats. They would probably be able to swivel. I wonder if I have photos of our van. I would never want to change the seats. They're original to the van from the 60s. They're this beautiful leather that I think at the most I would get upholstered at some point. Where did I save these videos? See, oh, look at these. They have like... They're like kind of shorter on the back, but oh, I wish I had better photos of them. They're just so cool. I love, and they match the dash and everything, and they are just so retro, and I will never change them. I will never. Anyways, carrying on. And uh, I'm pretty happy with them. So these things are actually pretty neat. They're middle row seats from a Mazda 5 minivan, uh, this passenger side one has this flip out cup holder and storage cubby thing. And uh, if you lift up on here, there's some storage under the seat. I just have... I do wish we could do that. Remy's dog stuff in here, first aid kit, some extra fuses and stuff. Um, I replaced this shoulder belt with just a lap belt so that I can swivel this seat around. Um, without having to disconnect the seat belt up there and I don't usually have passengers so um, it's pretty rare that it'll be like a safety issue but uh, that's about it got an extra roadside kit up there um, a fire extinguisher which I'm probably gonna mount right here the plastic cover that went over the doghouse is all cracked and just falling apart so I think I'm just gonna leave it off mount the fire extinguisher there um, I tore out the radio because um, I had to pull the dash to fix a water leak coming from the AC box and while I was in there the radio wiring was all janky uh, the speakers were toast so I just pulled everything out I usually use this Bluetooth speaker when I'm driving anyway these dashes are impossible to take off and I'm so afraid because the 
plastic that they're made out of is so old when you pull it out I'm so afraid of cracking it our speakers were toast as well so we've upgraded the sound system <laughs> okay this is this is <laughs> this was in our tier three this is a nice to have but we've done it already and it's in we have a subwoofer under our driver's seat when we upgraded the sound system we put two speakers in the doors one on each side then we had a speaker there was a speaker uh under the dash down the middle which was kind of shitty because it was just one so we had to buy a pair and then <laughs> just use one but when that one goes we have the second one that we could wire in instead eventually so it's 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 okay <clears throat> we got we integrated a it's a vintage looking i wonder if i can find it Vin uh, vintage bluetooth um car stereo and it's this like retro sound manufacturing, I believe. Or is this vintage car radio? I think it was these guys, retro sound. Yeah. We got one of these for from uh, our family as a gift for Christmas one year. So we have uh, integrated Bluetooth that looks like a retro stereo. It's so sick. It just is a little finicky. <laughs> We've had some issues. We've had some issues. But uh, yeah, it ties in with our subwoofer under the seat. And I don't think I have a photo of it. But the dial for the subwoofer is we utilized the old uh, kill switch. And so, and then it has a little label above it that just says bass. So <laughs> when, you, when you're when you playing bass music and you want to dial it up, you can just like, and you're driving the van, you can just like crank up the bass volume. It's really cool. I'm super stoked about it. I would not, this is probably the music, <laughs> the music lovers in us. We would never, we would never get by with just a, uh, just a, a, a bluetooth speaker like this our audio system was actually pretty high on our importance list i guess that wouldn't make it tier three then it ended up in our it ended up in tier one so <laughs> whatever i'm just gonna put a storage cubby in there and then maybe make a panel for the cigarette lighters so you have them labeled here do some usb plugs or something right there and uh call that good um replace the dash lights with some leds because they were impossible to see unless it was pitch black. We have that problem too. We haven't done that though. And uh, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much the front. So we'll go ahead and move on to the back area. So up here we have um, another, a storage loft, which is just a section of the original roof. Uh, I'm typically keeping my camera bag up here, my laptop, um, I have couple boxes of movies and a CD binder of movies and stuff and this kind of honestly it's just kind of a catch-all right now uh, so we have one of these as well actually and it's it's I understand why he built this uh, paint this painted edge I guess over the front of this because we use ours for the same thing at this time I intend to build over it though because we've camped with our van a few times now in on forest service tree roads in bc and gone off-roading and stuff and even if the road doesn't feel that bumpy the amount of weight that vibrations will throw is insane we have this like we have this propane uh, campfire that we bought. It's a propane powered campfire because there's often in Western Canada, especially during wildfire season, there's often wildfire bans. So the propane campfire is allowed. You can just, um, just like pl plug in your tank and then turn it on. And it's actually kind of convenient too, at the end of the night when you want to go to bed, cause you can just turn it off and you don't have to wait for all the coals to die down and stuff, or like get water and like waste water on putting it out and the like. And this thing's heavy, like I, it's, it's a, it's heavy and we have had it just thrown off of the top because of the road bump. Like if we're going on like a hit, like uphill on a dirt road, it's 1000% falling. So <laughs> this edge is super important, but that's why I've actually made the conscious, like we've made the choice that we're just going to completely 
put like we're gonna completely build it off and I don't think we're ever gonna store anything other than linens or clothes anything that's more soft up in the top there because it's so it's so dangerous we were no one was in the back thank goodness but we were um and like our dog wasn't with us but we were i think going to a music festival or something and we had the mattress on the floor in the back before we built the bed up and a bunch of stuff stored and we just like what we're going uphill over a bump and like literally everything flew out on the bed and it would have been so scary if uh if someone was actually there <laughs> um got some workout things wrist brace just some stuff like that uh had my friend ricky paint this headboard for cute. me um, cute. which is a kind of a replica of my tattoo cute i want to do i want to do integrated art somehow i don't know like in the ceiling or like at uh, cabinet doors or something i'd love something like that uh, mount jefferson in central oregon my favorite mountain so pretty happy with that how that turned out I made these uh, insulated roof panels. I wrapped them in fleece because uh, I wanted some kind of. St okay, see, this is why I like. I like watching other people's videos. Um, this is another high top Chevy build where he is dealing with fiberglass. You can actually see. I can see in. I mean, maybe in a different view. He doesn't have integrated wood boning like a lot of fiberglass tops do and like i've seen other people have so i actually do think this is a really creative solution to insulate the fiberglass top and this is why i like tours because this is like this is something that i actually hadn't really considered doing any like it, it, it i hadn't considered doing this yet which is actually really cool because you could also integrate some really nice upholstery on the roof if we could find some kind of retro 70s sort of um, patterned vibe or something. Like it's it's an opportunity to create interest while also being lightweight and really um, uninvasive. Like I, I would imagine the adhesive to glue this on would not have to be permanent. It wouldn't have to be a permanent solution. So this is a really cool idea. I like this a lot. Roof panels, I wrapped them in fleece because I wanted some kind of synthetic fabric that wasn't going to mildew so bad. He knows. Um, they're kind of, they're adhesived on there. Some of them are Velcroed. These smaller ones are Velcroed Oh, Velcro, on. even cooler. Okay. Uh, the side panels are, are removable. I just Velcroed those because... Uh, they, these need to come out if I ever need to remove the headboards. Um, uh, these pieces of wood, thinks. I originally... This man thinks. Originally had laying flat to hide the, the original roof channel there that was full mm. of... See, we deal with this problem too. I wonder if I have in my photos... Uh, you can see how oddly shaped it is. Like, they just, they literally just took, like, the metal whatever you cut the roof off with and like the edge is completely unclean and also kind of just like is this weird curve that's like bloop and I've since day one I've been racking my brain how we want to cover this in a way that isn't gross <laughs> because it's it's such a I don't know oh, it's so stupid I think what we should have done, and we are 50% way through our build and have way too much stuff integrated now, but I think what I would have maybe said we should have done is tried to trim a lot of the excess metal along here down so that it wasn't so prominent and invasive. I'm still, this is still one of those aspects of our build that I'm, uh, I'm humming and hawing over. Screws and things to hold the high top roof on. Um, so I just screwed them on vertical and then wired in some LED rope lights. So I made these pretty simple curtains. I made a video on how I made those. Um, obviously these do have some privacy benefits, but also they kind of hide some of this ugly um, gap in here. Oh, he didn't finish the edge of his walls. I don't like that because 
and this is maybe just like a, a cleanliness thing. Like, I, it, you could lose stuff down there. Things could crawl down there. I don't know. I just, I don't like having um, such a large area into a void like that. I would have capped this off in some way. Which, uh, when I go and redo the whole interior in the spring, uh, I'm going to try and frame this in so mm. it looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, that too, aesthetically. Um, this is a little bit of a mess right now. My battery is sitting right here because I need to make longer cables for it so that it can reach and go under the bed because mm. I just reused the cables out of my Subaru and they weren't quite long enough. Um, this is a diesel heater. It is currently broken, um, so I'm going to have to get in there and fix that. And uh, uh, one more note on this thing. I do not recommend buying an all-in-one unit for your van. I Buying the individual kit would have been much easier for me because I had to completely modify it so that the exhaust was actually sitting below the van and tear it all apart. So that was just a big mess. So moving over, mm. this is my power wall. So I've got, I've got this switch panel. It's got USB plugs. A uh, cigarette lighter, which I never use, and a volt gauge. Uh, this is my... I don't love having all of the utilities like this up front. I feel like the front is just... It's, it's an area of such nice real estate, especially given its connection to the front cab and the like, and the opportunity to integrate the front cab into your greater van design i th i i am obviously i'm personally more in favor of integrating all of these elements at the back or i guess under the bed which i see his bed is at the back in this build and he hasn't done that i'm curious to see if he talks about it this is definitely a very practical build 1000 percent. this is not uh the pinterest front page of Instagram feed kind of build, but I don't want you guys to discredit these tours because just because it's not the most aesthetically like aesthetically pleasing thing again like you've already seen he's had some ideas early on and um, has talked about some good things like with the panels on the roof and stuff like that that I'm, I'm finding valuable I still think there's value in watching videos like this that aren't necessarily the peak of of aesthetic trendy influencer type media my dc to dc charger that tops up the battery when i'm driving and it can also accept a solar panel input which i'll probably actually be installing um well at some point uh and th this is just a um power strip with a built-in circuit breaker uh, that I installed for shore power. So this goes out to a uh, NOCO AC port 15 amp inlet. And uh, so that's, if I'm parked, I can just plug in here. Oh, so he has um, shore power inlet. At the back and, there, uh, okay. So that's, if I'm parked. We have shore power too, <laughs> but we put ours on the passenger side not really realizing, didn't really think about it, but any campground or, well, any campground, I guess, that you would pull into and have shore power at, all of the hookups are on the driver's side, kind of on the, I guess, like the back of the vehicle, like where it would kind of be tucked out of the way. We put ours on the passenger side and now it's fine. It just means that whenever we want shore power, we have to run from the passenger side kind of all the way around the back to the shore power hookup. And it just, it's, it's a really long cable. It can be a tripping hazard. It kind of gets in the way. It's not that nice looking. There's a reason why in RVs and camper vans and the like, all the utilities are on the driver's side of the vehicle at least in North America, where we drive on the right side of the road. We weren't that conscious of it. I regret it. It's not a big deal. But 
just a note. Part that can just plug in here. Um, these power connectors are go to my lights. So the, the strip lights and that dome light there. So I'm, I'm wired them in with these um, DC plugs so that I can quickly, if I'm parked, I can just swap the plugs over to this thing, to the power. I need to be honest and confess that I don't know electrical systems very well. I hope this is valuable to someone else. My partner does all of this. It goes in one ear and out the other. I think three-dimensionally, I don't think in electrical terms and math. Power wall, so I'm not draining the battery for no reason. Uh, I do have a mini fridge. Uh, it only works off a of short power at the moment because I don't quite have the battery power to be charging this thing off grid or powering it off grid. I want to talk about fridges for a sec. I can't tell. I think this is just a standard mini fridge. I think this is just a run of the mill purchased from Walmart or Home Depot or something. Please invest in an RV fridge, please. <laughs> I know it's a big cost. I know it's a lot of money. Biggest thing is, oh, bonk. Biggest thing is um, efficiency sake. They're actually designed to run more efficiently. But they're also designed for the vibrations of driving. And this is the big one. Mini fridges that you buy just for your house are not designed for the vibrational impact that RVs and camper vans endure. It will not last long. Don't do it. <laughs> I know, again, it's a big investment up front, but for longevity and for the sake of your investment in your build, get a used RV fridge from someone that's parting out an old camper van or something. Don't buy a mini fridge. I want to actually, like, hold on. I'm actually going to... Don't... Um, See, people say yes. <sighs> I'm saying no. I'm saying no. The mini fridges that are put in RVs are actually designed for the vibrations and how they handle the coolant and the like is um, the vibrations are taken into account for that. Mini fridges for your house are not meant to be jostled around. The coolant or refrigerant that's in it is only meant to, it, it's meant to function in a still state. It's I, I'm not, I can't confidently go as far as to say it is a hazard, but I do know that for the longevity of your fridge, if you don't want to be buying new ones constantly, which if, if that's your choice, I guess if you're in a pinch and that's the decision that you have to make, that's up to you, go for it. But I'm, I'm a big proponent of, uh, of doing it right the first time, spending a little bit more up front so that you don't have to later, and I think... Personally, your fridge should be one of your biggest investments in your build. That's my thoughts on that. Grid or powering it off grid. So mostly it's a nightstand at the moment. Uh, carbon monoxide alarm. This is the dimmer for the lights. I'd like to note too, carbon monoxide alarms should be installed as close to the ground as possible. Carbon monoxide is a heavy gas and it will sink. So I think where he has it is probably fine. I would put mine lower for the strip lights, remote for the diesel heater. And I'm a pretty big Star Wars nerd and The Mandalorian is an awesome show. <laughs> so I got this uh, funny painting from uh, Ashley Rain art with The Mandalorian fishing with Baby Yoda there. So uh, <laughs> check her out. She's got some pretty cool novelty art. Switching over here, I got this old filing cabinet for free off of Facebook. I painted it white. So this build didn't really build a whole lot. It looks like it's a lot of, um... A lot of sourced items. 
brought together to make a functional build for this person, which is honestly like, hell yeah, if you could make that work, do it. The only reason why we wouldn't necessarily go that route for ourselves is just given the fact that we want to try and live in it full time, we just recognize that there was a lot of features or comforts that we wanted integrated that required a more custom execution. Just this oak color. And, this dog uh, is so cute. Put these baby locks on it so that the doors aren't baby sliding Baby locks. Open. You can help me right now. In the top, I keep just kind of a... That's the other big one. I see, I see regret videos all the time where people didn't put any kind of either like baby locks or just like uh, RV RV hardware that is actually meant for the vibrations and then like drawers come flying out, cupboards come flying open, things go spewing across the van. I see this even with like when people put items on upper shelves and the like. Vibrations are really strong. Things will fly open. There's a reason why regular RVs have the hardware and everything that they do. Catch all of stuff. There's some of some camping stuff, some Remy's medicine and things. And the bottom is the cooking drawer. So it's got my wash bin, buckets, stove, some food and things. Hell yeah, he's got everything he needs. And uh, it works for what it was. It's yeah. free 99. It works. So. Fuck yeah. Good I for mean, him. Can't complain about it. The bed is actually <clears throat> was in here originally, but it was facing, it was along this wall. And so I kind of cut it up. I want to wait and hear what he says about why he moved the bed and how he feels about it. And then I'm going to talk about the bed placement for a second. I modified it to fit this way. And this is essentially a queen size mattress, but I cut it down 10 inches shorter. So, no. 10 inches shorter. I can't lay this way unless I'm using, I have a leg riser pillow. Uh, then I can kind of lay this way. But for the most part, I sleep with my head here and my feet down in that corner. And then Remy picks one of the other side. He said it before I even had to. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when we get into sketching, this is the same model of van that we have and same issue. We cannot place the bed across the back horizontally and sleep comfortably, especially like I'm 5'7". I'm too tall to do that. I think it was five foot eight, five foot eight and a half or something like that from the, the width wise around at the back there. And it was funny too, because when we were just when I was designing the van initially, my partner was kind of like, "Oh, but it's like, I don't know, like we'll just make it work. It's so much more aesthetically like simple to design for when you can put your bed across the back." And I, yes, it is way easier if you can do that. I think your build would be astronomically simpler to design for. However, if you've ever slept on a sofa like a love seat that is just like two inches too short for you. Have you ever done that and then gotten the leg cramps? And I think because this is one person in a vehicle, it's just um, this fellow and his dog, that's totally fine. For two of us and our dog, it was not going to fly. <laughs> it was no bueno. So that's a big note. I'm actually going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to write this on my notes here that it has to be horizontal. And I'm going to put like... Uh, sorry, vertical bed. Vertical bed. Gotta do it. It's, it's not gonna work any other way. That's, yep. Uh, it's here. Uh, this loft is just more bedding. Got my extra blankets, my leg riser pillow, um, and a big monstrous minus 30 sleeping bag in case it gets real cold. And there is some storage under the bed. Ugh. It's kind of hard oh. to get to. Oh. Um, so nothing. This is something he can fix if he decides that it bothers him too much in the long run. I, I know that would bother me. <laughs> so. Uh, 
um, what am I looking for? Like, um, they're called, um, there's a term for these hinges. I thought it's not hinges. Um, it's these like, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, it's these things. They, they use air pressure. What are they called? Um, gas support, gas struts. Is that the term? Hydraulic. Hydraulic, uh, hardware. Hydraulic bed. Hydraulic bed hardware. See, and this is, welcome to my world of research. When I don't know terms of things, we'll sit here and hash it out. Okay, so this is $90. Canadian but this is this is just if, 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 if it, it's a, if it's a comfort thing and you need it for your day-to-day -day practical dwellings um, I'm I'm even I'm considering this for our bed too depending on what we end up actually doing with it but yeah they exist he can upgrade this if he feels like he needs to but um, this kind of stuff is, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. The weight adds up on your cabinets and stuff when you're building them, especially when you have a lot of bedding and stuff on them. Super important goes in there on a regular basis. Yeah, nothing important. But it's all right. And then under the backside in the back doors uh, is the garage space. So I sectioned off. Is he going to go? Maybe about from here. Oh, yeah back a spot for my tool bag i have a couple buckets of random hardware and camping gear and rope and things and dirty stuff and extra fluids for the van coolant oil things that an old vehicle usually needs and some water it does have a roof vent it's a little bit sorry of the state but it does function and it works okay ours did too and we swapped this out for a max air fan just because of the ventilation requirements it's a little bit expensive but for us we felt especially with our uh like music festival camping and camping in hot weather where you're not necessarily able to access shade we felt that incorporating this with the venting capabilities that it has was valuable for us especially with our dog wanting to make sure that there was enough air movement in the van to keep it as cool as we can because we can't we won't be able to integrate any air like ac the vehicle is from 75 it doesn't have ac in the front cab either so the air fan that we swapped out for is just a little bit more proficient at cycling th air through the vehicle and it actually is like it's a godsend at music festivals we okay. used it last year it was great uh one of my projects i'm going to work on is installing a couple 12 volt fans right here to help with circulation because condensation has been an issue we just didn't diy it we just bought a product even with that vent cracked and uh i'll crack the wing mirrors up front so that's pretty much it that's my no don't smack me man don't smack me <laughs> oh his dog's so cute you know what? oh I'm my god sweet baby I'm trying to record we love you video, huh? Aww. um is he done you like to follow pretty along much it okay cool yeah um great economical build for what it is again not the epitome of pinterest builds but i actually really like the ceiling panel solution for the fiberglass top and this is why i like watching a variety of different tours and the like because to be honest there isn't really anything else from that build that i found that um I guess, like, inspiring, specifically given the bed issue. 
I think just given how he designed it with his bed across the back, that kind of ex nade using that for any inspiration that I have and see and even like I see some of these other builds and it's a bed across the back so this one has 3.7k I want to see if I can find any other Chevy G20 um Chevy high top van tour and we'll play around with um, with keywords for searching and the like. So now that we've watched that first video, if I can see from the inspir like the image, the thumbnail of the video that they have their bed horizontally across the back, I'm not I'm not gonna watch it. And if I see if if I skip ahead and I see that they do, I'm gonna veto that tour because we can't do that. So now I'm looking for alternative solutions that do something different than that. Because I need inspiration, I need layout ideas. Let's get rid of Chevy, let's just try High Top Van Tour. We need ideas that offer different choices. Oh, and see, okay. I'm going to watch this Westphalia one because Westphalias, as I mentioned, have some of my favorite layouts and I know that they do their beds differently. So we're going to see how it's done here. I'm also going to flag now that this is going to be the last video that I'm going to watch today. I do have to go after. This is 30 minutes. I don't know if we're going to watch the whole 30 minutes. I might skip through a little bit. I don't think we're going to get to any preliminary sketching today, but what I think we'll do, because two tours in my opinion is not really enough, I think next time We'll do a couple more tours, we'll sleuth Pinterest a little bit more, and actually get to sketching next time. I think that's, I think that's what we'll have to do here. So, without further ado, let's get into... Yeah, she's got hers across the back. Let's get into this Westphalia build. Can I skip the... Hi, my name is William Woodward, and... I'm also excited about this one, because Westphalias don't always have high tops, and this one does. So I'm curious to see how they incorporated the high top into the interior design of this build. This is my 1990 Volkswagen Vanagon named Ruby. Welcome to the tour. Welcome to the kitchen slash living room slash hangout area. Vanagons were made into kind of two main different categories. The Vanagon itself, which was made by Volkswagen, and then they would give these vans to this company Westfalia, and that's who made this into the pop top with a kitchen and fold down into bed system. When I bought Ruby, she was a tin top. I didn't know that. <laughs> I had no idea that that's why I always thought that just like the the name of the camper van model was called Westphalia. I didn't know that. That's super cool actually. Huh, neat fact. Our van was actually done the same. So they manufactured it through Chevrolet and then it got shipped to a third party camper van manufacturer that built them out afterwards and i wonder if i can find there was like a we found this like retro pamphlet of from the 70s of our van for sale i'm i might have to get it for next time um oh i wonder if i can find 
I don't even know how we found it. It was like this like illustration and it was talking about the specs of the engine and like the specs of the interior and it had the old interior layout in the ad which was so useful it was so nice to see it designed as it was intentionally built because obviously they were professionally manufactured camper vans that were professionally designed so it was neat to see the choices that were made back then for this build however a lot of times RV layouts and camper van layouts from original manufacturers just do them with the weekend warrior in mind they only assume you're going to take it on a trip for like three to five seven days at a time and they're not often designed to be lived in full time and that's why you see so many custom builds and so many people modifying the interiors of builds for themselves and the needs that they have you know it uh it only makes sense i'm gonna find this for next time i'm gonna look for it i think i found it on pinterest actually so i'll pin it and i'll talk about it next time up van again which means there's no pop it was a passenger van it just had two rows of seats and from there i pulled the seats out built a very basic setup in there like a platform bed and i had a little portable camp stove and you know lived that way for a few years see he's lived in the van for years the small one. So I trust I, I trust that this person has lived experience now that he has this other van. I don't know if it's, is it the same van and he added the pop top? But uh, about two years ago now, oh. I gutted everything and put this it is the great same high top the on, which okay. allows me to stand all the way up. And in doing so, I also then had room to make the build a little bit more intricate and a little bit more livable functional these are my favorite tours this is like i'm listening intently both my ears are open obviously one of the main things about having a very functional build is having it. a functional kitchen so this kitchen here is um by dometic it comes with a sink and a two burner stove combo it's all nice and contained so any any mess you make you kind of right into the sink sizing wise though i had to make it kind of small because vanigans are shorter length than some other vans um, and in order to get a full length bed which for me as a tall human was pretty important so the the width of the kitchen was determined by the length of bed that i wanted to be able to sleep in to give myself a little more cutting room i added this nice little fold up cutting board and I love these. everything kind these of lives so right here that I need for my day-to-day -day coffee, food, preparation type of, of living. Um, fold up sink with a little water pump. The way that this is laid out is over in this section lives the water tank. For cost reasons, we have decided not to move forward with a Dometic integrated product like this. We did a sink it's a farmhouse style sink it's kind of fancy and extra i'll post photos one day and all of the battery system for my solar setup mm. then over on this side is that's interesting to me that it's in the front like that there storage access maybe where i keep pots and pans extra food dry stuff all that jazz and i tried to make these as big as possible to be able to keep as much food as possible mm -hmm. all kind of nice and self-contained the sink and stove as you can imagine dropped down into this cabinet a little bit and i had this weird little extra space and <laughs> i was like well i don't want to waste the space because there's not a ton of extra so i made this tiny little shelf <laughs> that turned into <laughs> turned into my silverware drawer I under here love it. houses uh garbage so and you have to use every square inch every square inch and recycling moving back from there we've got power from the inverter mm. little ditty storage i think these little leather storage containers are great for keeping things that you don't want to fly off your shelves but also don't need to be so so organized and Wait, when we did the high stay? top we were able to 
put in these upper shelves, which has made my organized brain very happy because I can mm -hmm. have a little space for all of my... This is an element we'd like to incorporate in our build as well. Um, and like doing like rows of like mason jars and stuff for things like grains, like rice, quinoa. Um, again, we're, we're very inspired by cooking. It's something we enjoy doing. We also try very hard to stick more to whole foods. So a lot of our recipes, I guess like a lot of curries, a lot of, um, a lot of like just kind of grilled veg and meat and tofu and stuff. And even when we consume meat, it's not very often. It's only maybe two or three times a week at most, maybe just one or two on a typical week. Um, and so same with like oils and spices, those kinds of things we really want to integrate into our build because it is so valuable and when you're on the road i don't know something about like camping food if you have just like a really nice cut steak with some good spices it's so good and it hits different than it does at home i don't know why it just hits different it's so much better same with like even breakfast food. I don't like breakfast food in the city very much. Like I won't go out of my way to cook myself eggs and an omelet or whatever for breakfast. But when you're camping, it just hits different. I love it so much more. So anyways, yeah, spices, oils, and like dry goods and stuff. Um, we will definitely be planning to integrate. Accessories of, of cooking and you know, morning preparation. I've got my little coffee. Same thing coffee with knives too. I like the here. magnetic knife block. Teas, you know, basic cooking stuff. I have always wanted one of these magnet knife things and being able to throw the knife up there when I'm in the middle of cook prep is super convenient. I want that too. <laughs> I want to, I want to remind us though, that we are not looking at the granular details yet. We're looking at his overall layout. That's what we care about more. Yeah. But and I honestly, no matter what roads I've gone down, those knives have never come off the, the magnet, which is, I don't know, good luck. Hell this yeah. is a cool <laughs> little random feature that I enjoy that wasn't part of the stock setup. So making food, don't know where to put my lid. It's a little lid organizer that you just stick oh, on the shoot. glass panel of the, of the stove, nice. which is great. And it also fits this cutting board that I made. So again trying to get more countertop space in a small kitchen. Mm. I made this round cutting board to fit just inside the sink so that then I can use that as We're not looking at granular area, details yet. fits up here if I need to have the sink so cool. and this working on everything. Oh, oh my God, coffee is the other thing. I'm a coffee nut, it's like, the kind of tourism, aside from music, if I'm going anywhere new, it's gotta be to the coffee shops. It's gotta. But we usually do French press, not pour over. But it is it is things to account for in storage when we get to design and development. I'm writing that down before I forget. Prior to living in a van, I was in an apartment in Portland, and before that I was in a, a place in Illinois, and then before that I was in Alabama. So I had moved around a decent amount. I kind of knew the things that were important to me, and I also knew the things that were just nice to haves and not necessarily need to haves. So the transition into the van was more about what do I want to be doing every day and focusing on making sure that the things that I brought with me are the things that motivated me to do those things. So a big so thing for me was I was exploring my interest in photography and I wanted to see what it would take to make a career out of taking photos for a living. The other couple of things that were coming to me at the time was skiing and climbing. So I basically said, as long as I have the gear to do those activities safely and in the ways and places that I want to do them, then that's kind of enough stuff. So I didn't really focus too much on trying to make Ruby 1.0 into this crazy designed and you know feature packed vehicle. I said simpler is better, get out there and figure out what you like, 
figure out if this is something that you really want to do or a lifestyle that you really want to live and then learn from those experiences and take that into he nails it i'm obsessed to what you want ruby to be in the future yes. and i definitely <laughs> didn't think that she would be a seven year investment in my future but at the time that was okay it was figure out how to do this and how to do it well or well for me and then go from there next in the kitchen area is i'm obsessed the fridge powered by the house battery solar and i'm gonna have a conversation about fridges really quick i don't like top loading fridges i don't like them i think but okay <laughs> he's obviously lived it he obviously owns it he's done this for seven years so uh, i have not yet however how many times have you lost something at the back of your fridge and forgot about it and then it got weird? I feel like that would just be 10 times worse with the top load fridge. Cause then all of your stuff that you forgot about just like makes its way to the bottom. And then when you want to actually like clean out the fridge and get rid of it all, you have to take it all out and move it out of the way. Or if I want to get to something that like, if we're like got a whole fridge of food cause we just load it up and the groceries are fresh and we're on our way to the bush for seven days. And I realize I accidentally packed something, the, I don't know, the cheese at the bottom of the fridge cause that's how it was loaded in the grocery bag. Well now I have to take everything out. I hate that. <laughs> I, I'm, I would much rather just shift things around that are packed sideways then do this and that's just my thought with it but i think that um these top loading ones are the most efficient in terms of like from an off-grid perspective they actually maintain their temperature with way little like way less energy than the side swing ones but I couldn't get over that thought, and so we bought a side swing one. <laughs> this little container, actually don't remember where I got this. I think it was a garage sale or thrift store or something, and it was something else for a while, and it fit differently, and then I had to cut it down, but I really liked you know, the old nails and like the old vintage wood, so I, uh, I just like trimmed some of the side panels and, and made it work, but it's been with me for, I think probably, six years now it's just my cool little hmm. cup storage ruby did not come with a swivel seat i pulled a, a swivel off of an old van and welded it into the base plate so that i could have the swivel because that really just opens up the space so much and it's really nice for when people Maybe are hanging we'll try out it one day. you can use this as a little bit of extra seating yeah. just gotta climb over everything so then somebody can be sitting here there's a couple i'm gonna take i'm, I'm gonna point out the overall shape of his kitchen here though is an l shape and how he has utilized the space behind the seats in a way that not all builds i've seen have utilized i still i have hesitancies about layouts like this and how it would feel to climb over your all these elements every time you get in the passenger or driver's seat and again like i know he has the swivel seat here and it opens back into the cab but i still think that there is opportunity to create this as like a whole integrated space and to me this still just feels a little bit segmented off and choppy I will still account for the fact that this person has done this for seven years, though, and made this decision with his build and enjoys it. Well, friends sitting there, like I said, the swivel just really opens up the space a lot versus when there's the back mm -hmm. of the seat right here. Everything in Vanigans is a little bit climb over -y to get around. That's what I meant, actually, <laughs> a good way to describe it when I was... Um, talking earlier about how we're very fortunate my partner and I don't have any mobility issues and so we are able to design our van to be more climb overy than some other van builds that you see that are a little bit more mobility friendly but it's just the way it goes
from the command center up here, you've got all of your your standard skip. driving controls, steering wheel, shifter. This is a, a, a man, or sorry, an automatic. It's weird. Bought the van. It had something that was from the guy that I bought it from, who I'm, I'm still friends with. I'm gonna skip the front with. cap and stuff because just kind of we already, like, you can't really do a whole a lot time. there. But. So there's, there's, as you can see, more storage up here, more shelf for all my little mm. spices and such. And then yeah, the elastic uh, here, storage. That's how you I've get it. Again, more storage. Ruby's. The name of Ruby's game is. Yes, this is this is what I meant by blocking ours off. Just and I see. I noticed here that he used a what is this? Like a what are those like Ruby's. little latches? Like those little like pull latch guys? I don't know what this is. Maybe he'll talk about it. But um, so that it stays locked closed, <laughs> so that when you're driving, things don't come flying. And <laughs> up above here. I've got, again, more storage. Ruby's, the name of Ruby's game is try and fit as much stuff as I can. Not as much stuff as I can. All the stuff that I need organized and out of the way because I don't like to have too much stuff cluttered around. So creating these I'm the same. little storage bins that can be... If I had it my way, we would have like no clutter in our house. Closed and shut off. I don't have it my way. Kind of a nice addition to the new build. This wasn't here, obviously, when the high top wasn't here. This is all new storage. All these shelves are new storage, all that stuff. See, and that to me just says, it speaks volumes that this person who lived in this vehicle for, I, I forget how long he mentioned having it for, a couple years before he, four years I believe it was, before he made the decision to gut it and redo it and add the high top so that he had the standing room but he also had the extra storage. That's validating to me for pursuing a high top rather than a, um, I guess regular sized van. Lived in here before, but didn't have as nice of a put away fit place. I started collecting pins years ago, and a lot of these are ones that my friends have made or things that I found along the way during travels and cute. You know, little mementos of history. The ceiling used to be right about here. If I sat up straight, my head could touch the inside of the ceiling. And then when we cut the top off, installed this high top all of a sudden I was able to stand up straight inside a Volkswagen which is amazing I'm 6'4 so having full standing room is something that's unique not only to this family. ours is only six feet tall my partner's 5'10 and so we're like trying to be aware of how much we insulate the top so that we don't lose the like like we're kind of like two inches max and then he's crouching so Van, but you need it's to a tall high top. stood in my fair share of vans over the years and more often than not I'm touching my head on the ceiling so having this much actual standing room in a van is amazing it makes you know, your yeah. standard of living a lot nicer I think here at the Nissan Institute of Thrillology we're looking at the cold hard data I need to get you to premium so I don't get and these ads my apologies Career, career. I shouldn't put that in quotations anymore. I do this for a living. My career now is I, I do photography, commercial photography for outdoor companies. So that means that I'm spending time climbing, skiing, backpacking. The dream. I've done some sailing photography, river rafting, um, ocean kayaking. The dream. It's kind of crazy the amount of activities that exist in the outdoor world and then all of the stuff that you is used to support them wow and you can go obviously super minimal and you know go for a hike in your tennis shoes a pair of shorts and a t-shirt or you can go for a 2,000 mile hike on the PCT and have all this you know technical gear to get you there um, so I do photography for all the brands that make gear to help people stay outside for longer and enjoy their time outside more and my job is to bring to life the Kind of lifestyle that exists around being outside cool. which allows me to be outside a lot which was my intention of moving into a van in the first place is spend less time inside more time in the out of doors well moving into the back half of, mm. of the van so my main intention okay usually when i see van builds and this is 
Westphalia van builds. Maybe this is why his bed is so, or his kitchen was so limited, but usually this console is swapped and it's on the driver's side over here and the bed is on the left. And then you don't have to worry about when it's pulled out impacting the kitchen millwork length as much. It does look like, this is really cool though, it actually looks like his bed is higher and he's got a bang cut. But I wonder why the console is on the wrong side. With building Ruby and the way that I did was to not only create a space that was useful for me to live in, but also a space that I could invite people into. When it was a tin top, Friends! it had a permanently mounted bed that came out to here. So the living space was either you were on the bed or you're kind of in this tiny little nook right hmm. towards the front of the van. It wasn't really all that conducive to having people over, so to speak. So the big part of this design was how do I create a space that is not only functional for me to live, sleep, do my thing, but also be able to have a space that people could come and hang out. I wanted to have big bench seats. I wanted to have a place for I feel validated for having this want as well. <laughs> We're not the only ones. It's a valid reason to want to build your van a certain way, right? It's not a waste of space. We love friends. Lots of people to sit around the van. So over in the swivel seat on the fridge, there's another little bench next to the fridge. There's this corner seat. There's arguably two or three, depending on how wide your friends are to sit next to you. Also, the bed converts up into this bench, bench mode, um, which we call the, the loft seating. Cool. So, yeah, you can have a couple more people cool. up here, which I have done. Cool. This is why, <laughs> this is why I like, Westphalias are so innovative. This is super neat. So it's not, so it's a, it's a conversion bed. So it's like a full length, but it, accordions up to a seat cool it's great two people up here three or four people there two people on top of the fridge a person in the swivel seat a person in the driver's seat they're a little bit left out but they don't feel bad about it because we're all having a good time this has got my usb power mm. lights so it's got light i've actually wanted to integrate usbs instead of just straight outlets but we're kind of moving away into USB-C's I've seen too. I don't know. We'll think about a it. Light for the kitchen on a dimmer switch, a light for the ceiling on a dimmer switch. One thing that's, in my opinion, a, a must have for a van in the summertime is some type of ceiling fan. Some people use ACs. I find with just the fan, but being able to pull air through the van to cool things off is a pretty critical piece of the puzzle. It's huge. And then just your little standard fan. If it's really hot, you have some blowing air. I like a large that. Collection we don't of hats have right now. You can only see two of them fan. because I put the rest of them away. I was a little embarrassed by how big this stack was getting. But this is where I keep my hats. Cool. And then again, these shelves going all the way back. I don't even think about hats. Hats are a hard thing to store. We have, I have like the, I have some hats you can't squish. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna like note that under my tier two? Tier three. Tier three. I don't need all my hats, but I like my hats. Four hat storage. And this isn't a big element thing, but this is more of a design development thing. We'll maybe be able to squish it in somewhere with the layout we decide after. Provide some nice storage for odds and ends that are kind of daily use type of things or more regular use type of things. A cowboy hat, that's a, that's a daily use. See, it doesn't Put some new speakers that. in the back. Again, it's just nice to be able to have a little bit more nice sound. Mm. I use storage boxes for everything. So there's my little bookshelf here, another little wicker basket that I found at a thrift store that you know, kind of just has odds and ends and stuff that sometimes a little bit more regularly accessed. Up here you can see some little quotes that I've found along the years that are just kind of little reminders of, of life things. Aww. I like this one a lot. This one feels very van life. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. And that's Aww. by Hans Hoffman. Oh. <laughs> 
segue to the ad. What a terrible timing. A little more organizi organizing over here. Some toiletries and bathroom accessories. And then more books because I can't seem to get rid of books ever. I really like things in print. I want book storage. As a photographer, as a visual person, I just really like I'm actually going to put that in tier two. Things we have a Kobo, though. Maybe hand. you can go in tier three. A little, fun little, little tiny van. Something my mom gave me when I was moving into the van. See, and this is where watching tours is really nice, too, because book storage is something that I hadn't really thought of, something that I valued. But now that we're here, I'm adding this to my, to my list. Bookshelf, book storage, slash storage. Want it. When a van was built from a factory being a Westie, it had a bar right here. And then this was a platform. And that platform allowed a second bed up top. But as much as I would like to think that I have four people that need to sleep over all that often, that's not really the case. So what I wanted to do was create as open of a space as possible. So we cut that bar out, cut the roof off all the way back to the back of the van, and then installed this roll bar. This was the first one that we ever did, so it has now been dubbed the Willy Bar. Uh, Ransom at Cricket Finger Designs has installed a few of these now in order to open up a van again to have all of this headspace while still maintaining the, the structural stability of the van itself. And oh. the other great thing is it allows you to like kind of mount stuff up cool. to that area. Having things have a place is very important. Last cool thing is it has allowed me to put my little hangboard up there and, you know, get my workout on in the morning, you know. Oh, no big deal. hangboard. <laughs> I'd use it as a swing. Uh, I suppose the, the next big thing will be to show you how the bed itself works. Yes. To go from couch mode, which is what it's in currently, into bed mode, what I did was I... Uh, see, and the reason why I like Westphalia is they also have 360 windows. You can see the windows on the side. I'm sure if we do an exterior scope, it'll be this console was built in front of it. And I have no problem building in front of windows, except I want to be reassured that if we had to swap the glass for any reason, we would not have to rip our van apart. So I'm hoping to problem solve for that on stream. Made these slats. So it's slatted all the way back to the back of the van. And these pieces come together like this when it's put away and then as you expand out it doubles the size of the bed effectively and then the bed just the mattress just slides out like that cool. and poof bed now okay the other thing that i love about this is from what i can see here his bed is already made idea of having to deconstruct your bed and all your sheets and your quilts and stuff to use a table is really undesirable to me. I feel like when you're, especially when you're in a vehicle full time or like you're already compromising on creature comforts in other ways, I don't think I would be wanting to make my bed every day. And so I love that this into like this build has basically just like kept all the bedding on, but you can just like slide it back. And then when you're ready to sleep, you go. Whoosh. So as far as conversion beds go, this is actually my favorite style of conversion bed that I've seen. Just less hassle. Oh, honestly, taking it out is a little easier than putting it away. It's kind of a little bit of a get it in there and give it a little heave ho. Heave ho. To get the mattress to start going back in its natural position or in its couch position i wonder but, if it ever slides no, forward it. It when he's driving bed to couch and, and back to bed pretty easily part of the reason this table is here is because this is the main support of this corner of the bed mm. over here you might not quite be able to see it but there's also another support that holds this edge of the bed that's what holds the mm. end of this out and does its support from there now underneath here we've got more storage hiding in the back of the couch. This is where all my clothing lives. That's cool. Spin this around. There's more I like storage. That. My under favorite the kind of clothing seat. storage seems to like be. Like I said, the name storage. of the game with Ruby has been maximizing where things go and cool. how things work together. So in here, there's a heater, a little bit of extra cooking supplies that I don't use all that often, and mm. then all sorts of other stuff climbing stuff, some running gear, 
just random stuff. Nice. Oh, well, we increased our revenue. Many ads I think Too our many. team had something Too many to ads. do with that. Are we gonna do a garage tour? Back under the bed? Ruby. The interesting thing is the challenges that exist now differ a bit from the challenges that existed when I started. Access to Wi-Fi now, or at least for the last two years, has been weird. You know, we've had COVID, so mm -hmm. coffee shops haven't been as open and there hasn't been as many like communal living spaces because people are a little bit more like, give me a little more space. And that was kind of a big shift for me. I, I you know, part of the, I, I say that I moved into the van to spend time outside. I also moved into the van to be able to spend time with people that I cared about that lived in different places. Mm -hmm. So I had my Seattle family, I have my Portland family, I have my here, Bend community, I have my Salt Lake family, I have my Southern California family. And the idea of being able to live in those places for a period of the year and spend time with those people that I care about was very important to me. So through COVID, not being able to really jump from group to group that was a, a bigger challenge on me than i had i had foreseen when i was doing this in in years prior there's the obvious logistical problems of i'm a photographer so i have to deliver photos to clients and making sure you have consistent wi-fi to be able to mm. deliver a large batch of photos that can be challenging but i wonder what year was this four months ago he doesn't bring up starlink or anything but i've heard I've heard of van lifers even like streaming their gaming on the road with Starlink, but I guess the cost of it monthly is pretty hefty, isn't it? Isn't it like 170 a month or something like that? Uh, you know, part of living in a small space or living intentionally in a in a in a tiny home, it's not about what you can do self-sufficiently it's as much about what you can do with your community so i've always mm -hmm. found a lot of the challenges to be overcome through building the community of people that i spend time around and being able to ask for help when that's a really help, cool outlook can on I come it. over and get a shower hey can i come over and that's a really cool outlook on it i've heard the i've heard the um alternative to that uh the critique of van life being very lonely people having a hard time connecting with other people on the road. I think, I guess, depending on what you're using van life for, like what the intent of it is, perhaps if you're just traveling to sightsee from place to place, it makes it very challenging to meet people and make friends. Obviously, in this um, person's case, he is working with people in the outdoors and staying with them quite regularly in his line of work so it makes sense that he would have a community network that's already uh, compatible with that lifestyle i would say we're quite fortunate with music festivals as well like camping festivals being um an avenue of connection for us as well we will always find friends meet friends again connect with friends that we haven't in a long time in those spaces so but use your wi-fi for the night can i leave my computer sitting up set up so that it transfers all these files while i'm sleeping in the van um, the cool thing about having the van is you kind of turn into a neighbor versus a house guest so it allows you that to <laughs> be in a place and and have that relationship with whomever you're visiting as someone that isn't relying on them so much as you're getting to live in the same town as them for a period of time, which I think is like a nice mind shift of, uh, of what could be considered a challenge. That's cool. Moving on to the outside. She's okay, got yeah. So you can see here that he did build over this window. So I don't know who I ask this question or like, I, I don't know any, any auto glass installers personally to ask this question if you need inside access to swap out the glass would he have to take out the whole console or can you just do it all from the outside somehow i don't know i don't know the uh, answer to a two that inch question. lift bigger wheels and tires than come stock with vanigans mm -hmm. she's got this rad rear uh, bumper swing away Damn. system that's crazy my favorite part of it are the 
two bottle openers, <laughs> one for me, one for a friend. Uh, the stock backup lights on Vanagon's are, yeah, leaves a little to be desired, so oh. threw in some LED backup lights. Cool. This storage box I keep mainly, you know, extra tools and fluids and random stuff that I don't need to get to all that often, but are good to carry with you and maybe a little bit more Looking messy than you want to keep those. inside your rig. Um, Jerry can, a little bit of extra gas, never hurt anybody. Vanagon's don't have the longest and range outside of the van. fairly small good. gas tank. So <laughs> don't store having a little gas bit of extra inside opportunity if you there is great. Um, moving full. over here, spare tire, garbage bag. I keep a tow rope in mm -hmm. here because I'm always towing people out, everybody getting stuck. So I've seen people put these garbage bags or like uh, kind of sling bags on the back of their vans like this all a lot, a lot. Um, I'd like to do some research. The hesitancy that I have towards these and doing it ourselves is we camp in bear country a lot. And I've seen them mostly used, I guess, for garbage. I guess you could use it for other things and then whatever would be stored in the vehicle would go out here and then garbage goes in the vehicle. But I just haven't heard it talked about. With bear country, you gotta, you can't leave anything out. Tire, no garbage. Garbage bag. I keep a tow rope in here because I'm always towing people out, everybody getting stuck. <laughs> That's, no, it's for me because I get stuck. Yeah, <laughs> big bumpers, all that jazz. Up here you can see the antenna. Uh, this is for a CB radio. When we go down to Baja, it's great to be able to quickly chat with the other people in your party. Um, that's cool. When you don't have cell phone signal. Up top Ooh, we've got shit, cool. 100 watts of solar and that's charging a 100 amp hour lithium battery inside. I ski a lot, so I added these ski mounts to the outside of the van because oh. when you're coming down from the mountain and your skis are covered in snow, it kind of sucks to put them on the bed because then you're I didn't think about that, storing them when they're wet, but we're storing them under a bed. If you store them under the bed, is it a concern? Your bed's covered in snow. So, skis on the outside. That's so smart. Off. And then they live inside. That's so smart. Which I can show you. What? So these guys swing out. What? Move out of the way for when I open the rear hatch. And there's... I want one. Again, more storage that kind of lives under and beside the bed that's accessed from back here more ski stuff camping gear some chairs tables all that stuff this runs all the way up to where you saw the uh, back end of the kitchen setup so i can fit my very long skis in here and they're skis are hard to, to design for they're very far away from anywhere anybody could get into up front we've got a couple mods to the traditional van again um, again a nuts, nice big steel bumper mm. uh, replaced the stock grill and headlights with this led setup going from the old style headlights to the leds uh, i can't i say have thought about this uh if it's worth getting a bull bar and mounting some additional lighting because these old vehicles their their brights are not really that bright <laughs> thanks and then on top of that, I also added these off-road. Plus, I'd ever, I'd, I would love to have one if you ever, like if we ever accidentally hit a deer or something. LEDs, which Some kind of mimic the style of Vanagon grill called the South avoid. African grill that I think is really rad. The, the dual pod round headlights, I think, is a look that I really enjoy. Me too. And they definitely throw a significant amount of light when you're going down dirt roads in Baja in the middle of the cool. night. Um, when I bought Ruby, I bought her from my tattoo artist up in Portland in 2014. And she was named Ruby when he got her, so he kept the name. I was sitting there getting tattooed, and we were talking about vans and van names and kind of the legacy there, and I was talking about my buddy had a sailboat and it's got a cool monogrammed gold flake name on the back of the boat, right? And I was like, it'd be cool if Vans did that. They had this like cool monogrammed name on them. And so we decided I was going to buy Ruby and I show up to pick up the van and he had done this painting on the front. He's a, a trained sign painter. He did this Ruby on the front um, as kind of an homage to that conversation we had. And then um, down in Baja a few years ago, found this little puffer fish, needed a hood ornament. So the puffer is 
come with me ever since. One other kind of cool huh. mod that I think people don't necessarily think about is big truck mirrors. Um, because I keep the back all curtained and cushioned off, I don't use my rear view mirror at all. Mm -hmm. So having these burly wide truck mirrors is we a, have really big is mirrors, have, and then we also opinion. have the little Obviously, like kind of like fisheye domes that stick to it, so again, it like increases you your field of vision. But that's sick. I love this build. I'm obsessed. He's thought of it all. See, this is a person that knows. This is awesome. Thank you for joining me on this tour. It's been cool. a pleasure to give you a little rundown of. Awesome. I love that. This is sick. I'm stoked. Um, can I just like... Okay. <laughs> if it were if it were a legitimate project from scratch, I would be saving this video and putting it somewhere to reference later. Um, we already have our layout mostly selected, spoiler alert, so I don't necessarily think it's useful for us, but I would say worth saving, worth reflecting back on, especially for some of these integrated elements that we like might want to think of doing down the road later. Um, that was cool. I'm stoked about it. All right. Well, this is very bright now. <laughs> um, I've been live for three hours. I do have to go. So I think next time I go live, it'll probably be next Friday again. Maybe a little bit sooner. We'll see how I'm feeling um, and how time. It's really difficult for me because with my line of work, uh, I have to work 40 hours a week, but we work on deadlines and stuff. And I've had I had a deadline land kind of in between when I started this stream series into where I'm at now and it gets a little bit more challenging to um, uh, take half days and stuff because I have to work the extra hours and it's kind of draining it's really hard to plan a stream while you're also on a deadline working till like 8 p.m and stuff so it's a, it's a work-life balance I'm trying to figure out and work <laughs> work through as time goes on but I would like to continue this research uh, research kind of inspo gathering phase next time. We'll do a couple more tour videos I think would be fun because two is not really enough. I don't I don't know if I've seen enough between these two tours, especially because the first one was so minimal. This one I would say has more of the elements within like this checklist that um, that we created today. Um, there was some things though that you didn't really touch on that I would still like to research a bit further. Like there was no talk about how he showers. Well, he, I guess he talked about um, utilizing his community for those needs. So I'd like to try and find tours that maybe talk more about integrated showers or um, I guess this is only tier two, uh, like the toilet, <laughs> toilet location and integration. Um, I think, I think kitchen is pretty easy to fly same with the bed solutions too so as i mentioned i'm more partial towards um, some kind of fixed bed or a bed that can be transformed in a way that doesn't require you to make it every time so we'll do a little bit of digging for that kind of stuff um next time and get into pinterest next time start a pinterest board we'll do some sketching and maybe throw it all into 3d and see how everything's actually lining up so thank you so much for being here and watching this i appreciate it i really love design and this is super fun for me especially the tours and reacting and stuff i love seeing what other people have going on so thank you so much until next time we will See you soon.